right, let's talk about something that's been a digital rule for like forever. I'm talking two decades affecting over a billion people. If you've got a Gmail account, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, guess what? That unbreakable rule, it's finally breaking. You see stories like this all over the internet, right? For years, people have been posting on forums, feeling, well, digitally stuck, trapped by a name or a username they chose a lifetime ago. And the thought of starting over? Ugh, you've got this massive mountain of photos, contacts, your entire digital life. It's just not an option. I mean, who hasn't cringed at that username they picked when they were like 15? We've all been there. But for the over one and a half billion people using Gmail, that cringe was permanent. It was basically a digital tattoo. You were stuck with it. Yep, for the entire life of Gmail, you had two choices, and they both kind of sucked. You either just lived with that old name, or you had to create a brand new account. And that meant going through the absolute pain of manually moving everything over. Your whole digital history. People literally call it a nightmare, trying to migrate all your stuff. Your photos, your files, your contacts. So the big question, the one everyone's been asking for years, is why? Why was Google so stuck on this, especially when, you know, their competitors figured this out ages ago? All right, let's get into it. The two-decade mystery. Seriously, why did it take so long? This has been one of the biggest head-scratchers in tech for years. And let me tell you, the theories people came up with were pretty wild. And what made this whole thing even weirder was that other companies like Microsoft let you change your primary email just fine. They had for years. So that just made everyone even more curious about what was going on behind the scenes at Google. Why were they so different? So the top theory, especially among the tech crowd, was all about the architecture. The idea was that your email address wasn't just a name. It was the primary key, the actual foundation for your entire Google account. Changing it would be like yanking out the cornerstone of a building. The whole thing would just collapse. Now, Google never said if this was true or not, so we were all just left guessing. So for years and years, nothing. No official word. And then a clue popped up. But it came from a place that, seriously, nobody would have ever thought to look. And this is where the mystery really starts to unravel. You had years of people complaining, people coming up with all these theories online, and Google's policy was just this big, silent wall. It really seemed like that digital tattoo was there for good. But then, in late 2025, some really sharp-eyed folks in a tech group on Telegram, they spotted something, something nobody else saw. It was like the first tiny crack in that giant wall. And this wasn't some big announcement or a press release. No way. It was a Google support page, quietly updated. And get this, it was only visible in Hindi. It laid out this whole new process, and it looked like it was published by mistake, way before anyone was supposed to see it. So what this leaked page showed was a total 180 on Google's part. It described this really smart new system, a way to change everything without, you know, bringing that digital house of cards crashing down. But first, let's just pause for a second and think about the scale here. This is huge. We're not talking about a small update for a handful of people. This is for Gmail. It impacts a massive global user base. We're talking one of the biggest on the entire planet. So you're probably wondering, how does it actually work? Well, the genius of it is something called an email alias. So instead of this big, scary, destructive change, it's actually just a really clever addition to what you already have. And the best part is, the whole process is designed to be super smooth. You just pick your new at Gmail address and your old one just keeps working in the background. No problem. Nothing gets lost, nothing breaks. Any email sent to either your old address or your new one, boom, it lands right in the same inbox. Simple as that. Okay, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? There are a few rules of the road here. First off, your old address is still yours, forever. No one else can ever snatch it up. And second, this is a gradual rollout. That means you might have to wait a bit for the option to show up in your account. So patience is key. And listen, this is a pretty big decision. Once you make the switch, you're locked in with that new address for a whole year. So you're going to want to choose that new name carefully. No typos. There's also a limit on how many times you can do this. The leak said you get a grand total of three changes. So that means you can have up to four different primary addresses over the entire lifetime of your account. So yeah, again, it really pays to think it through. So let's bring it all home. After waiting for 20 years, what does this all actually mean for you, the person using Gmail every day? Well, the biggest thing is freedom. 
you finally have more control over your digital identity. Those days of having to create a whole new account just to ditch an old, embarrassing email address, they're over. This is all about letting your online self change and grow without having to, you know, metaphorically burn the whole house down and start over. You know, when you really think about it, this is way more than just a new feature. It's a fundamental shift in how we manage who we are online. It makes you think about the names we pick and the identity we show the world, an identity that for the first time on Gmail isn't permanent. It's not set in stone anymore. Thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm.